Welcome back to exercise four of problem sheet number three. This is a continuation of what you already know about cyclic groups from exercise number six of problem sheet number two. Uh, the main result from that problem was this character table. I won't go into the details, you can uh, watch the video. I will only explain the most important uh, uh, value right here. Uh, this value states that a vector acquires a phase when trans being transformed according to the nth representation which is proportional to the position of that vector. The vector must be in the tau representation of course. The, the position k of the vector, here the k is in the exponent, and to the nth representation. So we have e to the 2 pi i k times n over big N. And with that we can proceed and use our projector technique from exercise number 3 to find a basis for this tower representation. So we do that. In part b we find that basis and the gamma 0 representation is too trivial, we won't go into the details over here. We take as a trial vector, we take the e1 vector where we have a 1 sitting at position 1 and 0 is everywhere else. This is always a useful uh, trial vector. I really recommend you to check it with that first because you, before you check other vectors. And we do the most general way to do the projector technique, namely we take the projector vector for the nth irreducible representation and we act with that on the vector e1. So, the identity always leaves that vector intact and the character of this operation is 1, so we have that, plus the rotation by 1 nth of a circle moves our one, uh, one slot further, so we have a 1 at the second position as zeros everywhere else, and with that rotation we already discussed that this vector acquires a phase, namely e to the 2 pi i little n over big N. We can continue that and uh, the most general element is the kth element of uh, the group. It's a rotation by kth of the circle. The uh, phase acquired is 2 pi i k little n over big n times a vector which is 0 but at the kth point. And the last vector which is produced by our projector is e to the 2 pi i big N minus 1 over big N times the vector which is 0 but the last position. We can rewrite all this because we recognize that this is e1, this is e2, this is ek, this is en, so we can write that as a sum over k up until n minus 1. We have that phase which is being acquired 2 pi i k n over n times e k. This is the basis for our projector and we can move on and find a matrix for the operator, for the differential operator d squared over d phi squared according to that representation and solve an eigenvalue problem. We do that just the, with the same ansatz as from the lecture we can evaluate our function u at a position k plus minus 1. So we're at k and we look at the Taylor expansion, what happens if we move from k to k plus 1. And we, we expand that, we end up with u of k plus the derivative according to k of u at position k plus k plus minus 1 minus k plus the second derivative to k of u evaluated at k, k plus minus 1 minus k squared. This gives 0 because of the boundary condition and this gives 1 no matter if we have plus or minus here. Now we can write an expression for the second derivative, we take the 
plus and minus 1 as being equally important and therefore we can write the second derivative to k of u is equal to minus 2 times u k plus u of k plus 1 plus u of k minus 1. With this expression we can write a matrix which is associated to the operator a matrix M in the tower representation we have minus 2's on the diagonal minus 2 and we have 1's on the first off diagonal and 1's on the bottom off diagonal and then we have a single one at the corners because of boundary conditions. This matrix can be used with the, with the tower representation of Cn and therefore we have a common eigenspace with uh, common eigenvectors and common eigenvalues. We can write down the eigenvalue equation for this matrix and now we want to compute the eigenvalues, namely the energies. So, what do we have? We have our Vn's over here and we have our matrix over here. So we act with that matrix on these Vn's and then we divide by these Vn's again to end up with a energy according to the nth representation. So, first we have minus 2 times now we have here our phase, but we divide with the same phase, so we end up with 1. We only acquire phase differences. In the forward direction we acquire 2 pi i n over n, and in the backward direction we acquire 2 pi i n big N minus 1 over n. You can recognize this. This is the cosine minus cosine of 2 pi n over n. So the energies are distributed like that. Where here we have our n and here we have our energies. Okay, I want to quickly summarize what happened here. I know this video is long, if you already know the result you can stop right here. But What's important is we have this result from the previous exercise and this here shows up here again and we use that in order to compute these values over here. So these are the crucial steps. We have to do these otherwise we're lost. And these two values gives us the characteristic behavior of the energies according to the end representation. So the representation with the lowest energy is with n equal to 0 over here and the representation with the highest energy is at big N divided by 2. That's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.